things you do here and this week I have to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. The only listening to Yeah, this is great. Uh, good turnout. Um, so, hey, welcome everyone who's bright and early. Usually people trickle in for a few minutes, but um, so this is a special occasion. It's our first uh, guest hosted lab, which is something I would like I would like the majority of them to be guest hosted, so this is really exciting for me. And I would like to introduce everyone to Mark, who uh, has been active here in the community for quite some time. Uh, we were classmates in the October uh, Value Flows Ecosystems course that was led by Angela and Sebnam and Michael. And so we got to learn about designing these stock and flow diagrams um, to be used in token engineering. And then since then, Mark and I, uh, both of us went through the Ocean Protocol study group that was hosted here in the token engineering community. And that was, a, for, for me and I think Mark and everyone, that was a really good experience. I learned so much from that study group. And um, Angela pushed me to give a presentation. <laughs> so I gave a presentation on sort of AI in token engineering and specifically reinforcement learning in token engineering uh, with a focus on the uh, the token spice simulator that's put out by Trent McConaughey at Ocean Protocol. And so Mark got inspired by my presentation and he dragged me into a hackathon. Um, he got inspired to see if we could use these reinforcement learning agents for energy optimization because Mark has a background in that and he's uh, been focusing on the energy web protocol and there was a hackathon being hosted by ocean protocol and various other organizations at the time and so we we were investigating token spice uh, and and expanding it and extending it to add these uh, data uh, these energy web agents who can publish energy data and uh, stake on that data and and then even have agents that make some predictions and I don't want to give away too much maybe this is already a spoiler for the presentation, uh, but um, just giving a little bit of background and context, and, and I guess some inspiration for for what can happen in the community here. You know, t take the opportunities if there's study groups. I mean, all of you are here in the lab, which that's exactly what I'm talking about, because um, they it, things just seem to open doors. You know, when you when you enter into some of these different programs that are available, uh, you'll notice that different doors open up and. So it's been a nice journey with Mark through the course, through the study group, through the hackathon, and now he's the first guest on the on the TEC Labs. So <laughs> I'm uh, uh, pretty feel, excited. Feel really honored to having me. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you for being here, Mark. And I think I'll be here. I'll probably share my screen and track a lot of what you're doing. I even have some. I'll be plugging some resources into the Notion workspace, and uh, I'll just get kick off the labs with the same way. I always kick it off, so I'm going to share my screen here uh, just so that I can track and people can follow along. But how we always start is if you check out the TEC Labs channel here in the server and you see the pinned messages and go ahead and open up the Notion workspace. And I'll just get, I don't want to take up too much time, we're almost five minutes in, but I'll just remind everyone, open up the Notion workspace. Um, and Mark, you might want to do this too. Uh, there's this attendance sheet. So for anyone who's new to the labs, uh, find your way to the to the workspace and the attendance sheet. And what I always do is I'm just going to insert one column left. I guess this is lab 10. And then just punch in an emoji or anything you want to write in. Uh, if you're new to the labs, add a new row here. Anyone can edit this file, so go ahead and you can fill in any sort of data that you wish, your name, uh, it's nice to know what operating system people are running and and some contact information uh, for whatever kind of socials you want to add and then we'd like to use emojis um, if you don't know how to I always just like go to this website getemoji.com and then you can copy any sort of emoji and punch it in or you can copy once one that someone else has used so I'm going to find my where am I Awesome. And so, yeah. Awesome. Mark's in here. <laughs> Vitor, that's great. And usually it takes a few minutes for people to trickle in. But um, with that, so now that everyone has the workspace available, can open up Lab 10.
and I'll hand it over to Mark. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, well, first, uh, yeah, again, thanks for having me. Um, uh, Sean did a brief introduction of uh, our collaboration together and uh, started out with of course, the Token Engineering uh, Academy uh, ecosystem value flows. And basically, we uh, did a hackathon with the um, Ocean Protocol Dev Post. Um, I will put it up uh, in a minute. Um, I will share my screen right now. I think the best one is to actually do everything, right, Sean? The entire screen. Yep. Okay. Yeah, looking at, is it uh, shown? God. Well, I see your desktop, your wallpaper here. Oh, hmm. something not quite right here. Um, how can I do that? Ah. Oh. Mm. Oh. I think there's some 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 issue with uh, uh, rights or something permissions maybe. Um, Do you have two monitors? Yeah. Um, yeah. So some so that could yeah, potentially. Plug it out. Yeah. yeah, that's what I tend to do. Okay. I wish there was a more graceful <laughs> way to. Oh shit. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, again. No, doesn't happen. Maybe I should uh, leave it and then try it again, maybe, mm -hmm. or... Well, notice when camera. you go to share screen that there's some options. If you click to the right, um, uh, the first options it gives you is sort of by application. And if you click, let me do this. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is typical lab sessions, Mark. This, <laughs> this is what it's all about, <laughs> troubleshooting. <laughs> this is the reality of the situation. When you're a token engineer, <laughs> most of your life is watching loading screens. <laughs> <laughs> So in the meantime, uh, for anyone who wants to start take opening up some of the resources uh, on the background information here, such as Energy Web, I've posted in the lab agenda on Notion. Uh, I'm just starting to punch in some resources that I had um, curated myself when I was actively working on this project. Um, so there's some background information on Energy Web that you can find and the documentation from the hackathon that that Mark put together some really good uh, documentation. Yeah, I can I can't manage this uh, this show. Maybe you can put up your screen with the dev post uh, submission of ours. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That's Link. one that I don't have linked here. So let me dev post. I think I can just search it. Um, let's see. Ocean. Okay, take a pick from the uh, from the it's it's I think somewhere in the token engineering channel. Um, oh yeah. Of the uh, Ocean Protocol Study Group, Ocean Study Group, I think. There's the link. Yeah. 
tokenized power balancing. Yeah, that's it. So we'll give a short introduction about uh, what a submission is all about. Um, So the idea of uh, tokenized power or of power balancing in the first place is that you uh, you look at the natural flows of electricity. So basically, power is being produced by a power plant, but you have to consume it immediately because there are no economic viable ways of uh, of uh, um, storing it. Yeah, that you have batteries, of course, but they take away a lot of loss, and um, so basically. Uh, our power grid is uh, architected around uh, the idea of power consumers and power producers uh, as a means of you need to consume the, the electricity as soon as it has been produced. So basically immediately. So you can imagine you need all kinds of um, um, parties that are um, getting hold of this balance of power. So we need to have uh, an understanding of uh, what are the power consumers in a certain area and what are the power producers feeding that consumption profile. So basically these are, uh, we, we call that the uh, energy partners. Uh, big energy companies are uh, doing a prediction day by day and hour by hour of how much power they predict is going to be consumed in that hour. And they need to fill up that uh, uh, prediction pattern with power production capacity. So they need to scale up maybe gas-fired power plants or coal-fired power plants. These are not easily scalable, by the way, the, the last ones. Uh, but gas-fired power plants are e easily being scaled up as much as the uh, consumption is needed. So basically, these are quite you know fast uh, uh, regulating, fast controlling power um, uh, 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 power architectures. Um, if you put in a lot of renewable energy sources like wind farms or solar panels, you can imagine that the power production will have uh, a somewhat uh, a zigzag profile um, according to, um, let's say, um, uh, uh, weather conditions or uh, other kinds of, uh, of um, influences, like if the sun is shining, you get production of solar panels. If it's not, you don't. Um, uh, uh, just the same as, uh, as with wind. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is need to, we need to have some sort of production uh, scheme, um, which we, we can't predict really in real time. That's the other way around. Am I still um, on audio or not? Oh, yep, we hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, great. All right. Um, because I can't see your screen yet, uh, Sean. What? Is that true? Or... Uh, you don't. You sh yeah, I'm sharing ah. my screen. Yeah. Yeah. I've got this up in front Maybe... of me. The, uh... Yeah, yeah, great. Great. Yeah. Okay. So basically, this is the documentation side of the tokenized power balancing submission. And you see a lot of players are, uh, are in that... Uh, um, in, in that architecture. So what we need to try to accomplish is to have some sort of a prediction of a power producing profile of a renewable energy source, like a solar uh, panel or like a wind, uh, a windmill or wind turbine uh, farm. Um, basically, the idea is to have that data, that meter data of the production profile Backed to some sort of ocean data market token pool. Uh, th this was the main idea of the submission. And once you have, um, let's say, um, uh, an, a, a better production of uh, of your um, a, a better prediction of the uh, power producing profile, you could say that this is a stakeholder that is uh, more valuable than uh, a, stake, a, a power producing device that is not so good at predicting the uh, production profile for the next hour or so. So this, this is really a, a dynamic uh, um, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, thing. Um, so 
what I tried, to, what we try to do is uh, to have uh, energy devices uh, registered in uh, um, in the Energy Web Foundation. Uh, it's called the Energy Origin uh, Toolkit. Um, and um, if you can pack that to some sort of ocean data market pool, maybe you can play around with uh, uh, staking on that in order to give a signal mm -hmm. to the power producing device if it's behaving correctly or not. What do I mean by that? If it's behaving correctly, it means that this, this uh, power production profile is predicting what it should be. And uh, this is not uh, uh, something that is uh, that is really common in the uh, electri electricity sector, because you have those gas-fired uh, power plants that you can easily control. So you can easily predict what the outcome will be if you switch a button. But that's not the case, of course, with wind farms or solar panels. We have to pre predict according to weather profiles or weather forecasting. Uh, these are, uh, by the way, also data token tools you can imagine. Uh, in order to give a, give a good prediction of the data set, of the meter data set of uh, the hour um, um, uh, next, uh, to, uh, next to it. Um, so basically, what we try to accomplish is pack a power producing device, a renewable power producing device to a ocean data market pool. So um, we, um, we modeled some sort of an in the token spice model, I think we maybe Sean, you can go through the token spice model a bit, uh, just in a while, mm -hmm. because uh, what we what, what we are trying to uh, accomplish in the token spice model is to model these stakeholders, which are shown in this picture, as agents uh, simulating a kind of behavior as if they want to predict the power production profiles for the next hour. Sean, can you maybe give us a light introduction on the token spice model? Uh, sure. So I'm thinking there's a couple ways I can do that. Um, I'm going to, first of all, make sure that I share the repository with everyone. So this is kind of neat, this story as well. Mm -hmm. We have token spice, which started uh, with Ocean Protocol. And I, I noticed there were a few things missing from this. Particularly, it didn't work on Python 3.8 because it was using this static type checker uh, that, that just was uh, had breaking changes on Python 3.8. So I forked this um, onto Longtail Financial. And um, I fixed a lot of these issues and kind of updated some of the tests and then Mark went ahead and, and forked it off of uh, Longtail Financial. So I always like this. You can see on GitHub like the the trail of events um, and how something is sort of evolving in the ecosystem. So the one we're going to want to work on here is Mark's uh, fork and particularly a branch, the Energy Web branch. So let me share that. And this is because Trent gave a uh, overview of token spice and how it's being used for ocean protocol and he said this is really how he sees it being used is uh, forked and it's it kind of highlights the difference between token spice and CAD CAD uh, whereas with CAD CAD we have this very open general system it's like a general simulator that could simulate anything um, Whereas Token Spice is more of an engine that you adapt to a use case. So by default, Token Spice is very adapted to Ocean Protocol, to modeling the Ocean Protocol and the Ocean DAO and the Ocean Token. And how it's meant to be used is rather than being a general simulator device, it's more specific. So to adapt it to a different use case, you actually want to fork it and then change those specific details that you find throughout the, throughout the framework. So Trent, Trent was really happy when he saw that this is getting forked and, and used for different purposes. Uh, so uh, let me share this in our agenda here. This is the working repository. And I think what I'll do, so 
I was actually trying to run this <laughs> just before the call and came into some... yeah, this, this is this is actually this is a real hacking session. This so is, we have to yeah. get it get it running. <laughs> so I think I wanna start I'm gonna start fresh. So just imagine I'm gonna go into a workspace here. I'm gonna go into the TEC and I was just doing this beforehand, so but I'm gonna start fresh. So I'm gonna remove uh Let's see, token spice should be here. Token spice. Oh, maybe I wasn't working in here. Okay, so I've got token spice. I'm in my TEC working directory, and I'm going to clone this. So git clone. Awesome. So I go into token spice. Maybe increase my font a little bit. Um, and here I have my git branch, so I'm going to go git checkout um, energy web. So now I'm on the energy web branch. Just check what files I have. So let me see the readme. How do we run this thing? So some Yeah, exactly. I, I put on a, a section. Basically, this is just copied from uh, the old readme of, uh, of uh, Trent and, and yours, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. You have to scroll down to the cat cat uh, section. Basically, these are the things um, you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, um, skip that. Um, in order to get the thing running, you need to run Ganesh and you need to deploy the contracts. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And you need to have a, of course, a token spice environment, a Python virtual environment. So I tweaked the uh, environment.jaml uh, file a bit. So you need to take a look on that because I added some extra libraries for that. So uh, take a look at, uh, at the environment.yml uh, file and see what, what I, um, I did. Uh, first of all, as Sean mentioned, you need to have Python 3.8 and also CatCat. I yes. think these are the main the main uh, extra things I, I added, but I'm not sure. But I think uh, these are the main uh, um, libraries I added, or at least these are the the uh, the uh, requirements in order to get the cat cat stuff running. Okay, so th this is so these environment YAML files are used with Conda. And you can see that's yeah. the default instructions here. Yeah. Um, I, I generally don't use Conda on my system. I just use vanilla pip. And so what I just did there is I I just when I'm working on this locally, I just make that make sure that my the environment file is sort of synchronized with the requirements file because I'm just going to use the simple requirements file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my virtual environment manager, uh, virtual fish, and I'm going to make a new uh, well, I made one earlier, so I'm going to actually delete it. Uh, let's see, token spice. Okay, and I'm going to make a new virtual environment called token spice. Creating, and let's see which version of Python I have, 3.8.6. Okay, so then I'm going to go pip install from requirements file, requirements.txt. And we have everything installing there. And uh, how I, I like to use this IPython, interactive Python, which uses, it's kind of the same as Jupyter Notebook, but just right here in our terminal. So this is how I can check. So I can go IPython. Now I'm in Python. And I can go, okay, import CAD CAD. Yep, seems to work. Um, yeah, from CAD CAD dot engine anyways uh it seems like we have uh cat cat here so we that's a simple okay. way to check our dependencies yeah, great. yeah okay sure maybe you can we can go to the directory structure of the uh, of the repo uh, in order to explain some um uh, changes i made to it okay so basically what i did is uh, just you know uh, copied the whole token spice repo it's in there and i added a, a directory catcat 
in that directory CatCat, I put everything which is needed to run a CatCat simulation around the token spice agents. So maybe if you can uh, look at the um, um, uh, token spice is, is actually a simulation environment uh, without the perks of CatCat, I, will, I, would, uh, I would say. So if you look at, uh, uh, at how it's, uh, it's ordered, it, it's all around agents, agents doing stuff. And um, as you can look into the, uh, well, maybe you can go just into the agents. Yeah, the test. Yeah, okay, great. Um, you, you can look at it, but basically uh, these are the agents which resemble the stakeholders in your system. Mm -hmm. And these, of course, the token spice agents are all around Ocean Protocol and the data tokens and the data token pools. You can see, of course, the, um, uh, uh, the um, data ecosystem agents. You can see minter agents, burner agents, pool agents. This is uh, this is an interesting one because a pool agent is basically the the um, um, the agent that is delivering the pack to the energy web uh, power devices. So uh, the idea is that for each power uh, producing device. We publish a pool, a data token pool that stakers can stake on if they believe that power device is behaving according to prediction. So basically, uh, as Trent said uh, in, in one of his, uh, his uh, medium blocks, if you stake on some sort of pool, it's a signal of curation. It's a signal that this data token pool is, uh, is, a, uh, is a nice thing to have, is a thing that has value or something like that. Um, so what I did, I just copied the, uh, the earlier uh, publisher agent and the staker speculator agents uh, into a uh, EWX uh, agent, uh, as I can say, to have a, uh, a difference between the normal token spice agents, which are focused, of course, on the uh, ocean market uh, data token stuff, and the energy web agents which are going to, uh, to mimic the, um, the behavior of the energy producing devices and the stakeholders around that, which Sean uh, uh, showed in the, uh, in the earlier picture of the uh, uh, dev post submission. Um, yeah, that, yeah, exactly that, uh, that stuff. So um, um, I think uh, we need to go into the, to the cat cat uh, directory now. And look at the agents I put in there. And they are not in an agent directory because CatCat is basically structured around a different kind of, uh, um, uh, 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 basically a different kind of structure than Token Spice. Token Spice is built from the ground up. CatCat is, of course, some sort of an, uh, a simulation environment, I would say, which has all sorts of nuts and bolts already uh, stu uh, stuck into it. So I basically, I um, built a uh, directory simulation underscore ABM that stands for a simulation based on agent-based modeling. That's where the ABM stands for. You, have also, you can also have a directory a simulation um, around differential equations, which is a, a certain CatCat uh, thing of, of looking at, 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 uh, at things. A differential specification simulation is about mathematical specifications in how, uh, let's say, uh, how you can model a system. Uh, what I like about the agent-based modeling system is that it resembles more or less the actual stakeholders in the system. You can really fine grain the attitude and the behavior of the agents uh, or of the stakeholders in your system, and you can get fine-grained results uh, of that. Um, so basically what I did is uh, the agents are already in place for the simulation game. And if you go into the model uh, directory, you have all kinds of parts and uh, other stuff. And those of you who are not that familiar with CatCat is um, you can recognize uh, certain um, um, you should recognize certain uh, um, structural things about CatCat. And basically they're around, um, I would say, uh, 
um, two basic files. Um, first of all, you start with the state variables.py file. And maybe we can uh, look into that one, uh, Sean. And what I did there is basically in the state variables, you define the structure or you define the, uh, the model uh the model variables uh which you can simulate uh, on so uh and basically your um your model is about uh the set of stakeholders in your system so the set of agents in your system so if you scroll down this uh, this list you can see all kinds of uh, agents i am um, i'm uh, going to uh, to address um as you can see there are a lot of uh, uh, original token spice agents as well, just to get it running, because you know uh, there's a whole ecosystem of agents needed to start up before you can do a simulation. I need to flesh that that, that out even more because CatCat doesn't need these uh, uh, all, uh, but I haven't uh, got time to figure that out yet. But basically, what you can see here is that I. Um, I add some publisher agents, an EW publisher agent, and an EW staker agent. Now, what does that mean? An EW publisher agent is basically a fork of the publisher agent in Token Spice. This is the agent who is responsible for publishing data token pools. So if you go to Ocean Markets, you can publish a data token pool yourself. And this is the agent basically responsible for doing that. And if you look at uh, it from the perspective of the energy web, this energy web publisher agent is a stakeholder which has been represented by some sort of power energy producing device. So basically, I can say I'm the owner of this solar power plant or of this wind farm. I want to open up a data token pool so people can stake on the prediction of my power production of my wind farm. So basically, I open up a power, uh, a data token pool around my power production device or around my wind farm or around my solar panel, uh, all kinds of stuff. This is the link between Energy Web on the, on the one hand and uh, Ocean Market on the other hand. Now, you also have an EW staker agent. Basically, these are all kinds of uh, uh, speculators who are thinking, well, I see that we have some data token pools of these wind farms. I, I'm going to stake on it because I believe that this, uh, this uh, data token pool, this power producing device is behaving according to plan. And um, I'm going to stake on it. And if I don't believe that uh, uh, he's uh, producing according to plan, or if I believe his, his behavior is bad, uh, it's all, all about behaviors. Um, then I unstake on it. So, and this is the neat thing about simulation. Um, um, if you go into, uh, um, maybe, uh, uh, Sean, you can go into the uh, implementation of the EW staker agent. It's in uh, parts agent, model mm -hmm. parts agent. You can see if uh, Trent modeled this this quite, you know, uh, uh, coarse grained. I would say I implemented it slightly uh, uh, fine, finer uh, in a finer grain. Uh, basically, every step the simulation takes, every time step, we are going to do a speculate action. And if you go into the speculate action, it's going to see if there are any pools to stake on. And my and this is where the where the the, uh, the nice thing um, um, is going to happen. We need to have pools to stake on. And if I um, if I look at um, uh, uh, I see, yeah, there's something wrong. I think with this uh, implementation, maybe that's why it doesn't work uh, at your side, uh, Sean, because something is fishy here. But okay, <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's about uh, about staking on pools. And what I do here, if you scroll down a bit. What's fishy, uh, Mark? 
Yeah, fishy is uh, n n not quite right. <laughs> it's sm it's smelly. <laughs> what I, I, I'm trying to see. Know? Does anyone see it? I don't see it. Um, but I'll put a note. I'll put a little. Uh... Yeah, here. This is this is thing I I, I removed. I think. Uh, yeah, debug that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, what I did is, okay, let's look at uh, if I hold some sort of balancer pool tokens in that pool. And once I have that, I randomly stake on it once in a while. So if in the half of the, uh, 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 in half of the, uh, uh, the time steps, I will stake on it and on the other half, I don't. And um, Basically, I think this is this is the uh, still the uh, the old uh, simulation uh, of token spice, uh, which has not been uh, completely um, put into the uh, into the Git. Uh, I think, uh, Sean, maybe this is the problem because I really did 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 uh, did uh, uh, make some some really um, changes here in order to have some more dynamic staking behavior. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, the stuff uh, we really need to take care of because staker agents have, of course, some sort of behavior behind them. Uh, as I said, if they believe uh, this power device behavior is good, they stake on it. If they believe it's bad, they unstake on it. So basically, this is the, uh, the behavior we want to put in place. And what I did now is uh, randomize the staking behavior just for the sake of simulation. And if we go to the uh, EW publisher agent, um, I think uh, I just see. want to take a moment here, Mark, before we jump. So yeah, there's a couple sure. cool things to see. So first of all, this is a practice that Trent uh, came up with, this idea of labeling magic numbers. And if for anyone who has a background in software engineering, you might be familiar with this idea that you should never have magic numbers floating around your code, you know, like just a number that's not labeled, yeah. it's not given a variable name. But Trent yeah. is kind of bending this principle and saying, well, actually, to reduce abstractions and reduce complexity, he's not going to ge generalize everything out to like an interface, um, which is what you would normally do. You'd pull all these numbers out into a single interface, give them, the, give them all names as variables, and then you can tweak them from there. And he said to reduce abstractions and reduce complexities, he's not going to do that. He leaves all the numbers inside the engine itself. So this is like a difference you could see from CADCAD. CADCAD, you're going to make all your configurations and then throw it into the engine. With token spice it's you literally have to go into the engine itself and tweak <laughs> all the parameters inside of it but what he's done to make up for this is he he labels everything everywhere there's a magic number he labels it as a magic number so if you wanted to search for all the places of the engine that you could configure you could search for all the instances of this label and so this is what mark is saying right now we have a very simple um, staking policy on this agent where half the time it's going to um, unstake 10% of its stake. And let, let's just break this down a bit. What is BPT? So here's a pool. And so this is how we create a data token on the data marketplace is someone has a data set and they actually, when they issue it on the data marketplace, it creates a balancer pool in the background and actually forms a bonding curve and this is what Mark was saying earlier is this idea of using staking as a curation mechanism because every data set <clears throat> on the ocean marketplace has its very own bonding curve with its very own data token that can be minted as people come and stake and as you know with the bonding curve as as you stake more and mint more of these tokens the price moves up along that bonding curve so this is what creates this curation market is that if you find something brand new maybe a brand new data set that no one has staked on then the initial minting of those data tokens is very cheap and as more people mint more data tokens that price goes up so if you find a data set that hasn't been um, discovered yet, you can stake on it and just unstake later to make a profit, being one of the first signalers of a quality curation. And so this is the mechanism that Mark is using and applying to to data producers 
and data optimizers actually rather. So we have the data producers with their solar farm and then we have a data optimizer who's actually making predictions and outputting predictions into ocean, the ocean market on, on the future consistency and outcomes of these power producers. And then the, yeah. the stakers are curating the optimizers because they are um, checking the accuracy of these optimizers and staking on the very accurate ones. So we create this reward incentive for optimizers to very accurately predict what the energy outputs are going to be so that we now have these forecasts and we can the grid can can use these forecasts for optimization of the of the energy flow. So this is a really yeah. neat neat th uh, mechanism that's happening here. Yeah, that's that's a great uh, explanation about what what is about to happen <laughs> because I haven't uh, uh, <laughs> implemented the optimizer agent yet. Because in order to have optimizer agents, you need to have some sort of an idea if uh, this power producing device is behaving correctly. And this is where the staker agents come into hand, come in handy. Because once staker agents are going to stake on it, then you have some sort of a signal that, okay, this is a power producing device which is behaving correctly. But as Sean mentioned, you can uh, use that also the other way around. So uh, instead of st having staker agents already staking on, uh, on these uh, power production pools, uh, I would say, you, have optim you can have optimizer agents in place that are optimizing these pools and staking on these pools in order to have some sort of signal of, okay, this, is, this one is going to predict correctly. And you can have both. So um, both uh, staking on uh, just, you know, your normal production profile data sets, and you can stake on the prediction of optimizer agents data sets. So you have a really neat uh, um, influencers network, I would say, around publishers, stakers, and optimizers. Uh, we need to figure that out yet. But, uh, well, let's say uh, if, we can, uh, um, uh, um, if we can figure that out. But actually, that's something for the, for the next session. Because once you, get, uh, um, once you want to, uh, uh, to have reinforcement learning, a learning agent in place, which we had in mind for the optimizer agent, you need to have some data and some sort of reward function in order to have them behave behaving correctly. Right, Sean? Exactly. Um, yeah. And so an optimizer basic or a reinforcement learning agent essentially has this capacity to observe an environment and make a decision. So it'd be really interesting to implement this. And this was the content of, of my presentation that I gave in the Ocean Protocol study group is we could have these reinforcement learning agents as optimizer agents that are observing the data sets. Oh, no, uh, not optimizer agents, but rather staker agents. Um, well, there's multiple ways you could implement machine learning in here. I mean, you, you could just use simple machine learning like forecasting to sort of take in uh, for the optimizer agents. They could be observing the um, production um, capacities of the of the power producers and essentially the patterns in those production patterns and they could be making forecasts um, and the staker agents could implement reinforcement learning where based on the what they're observing from the optimizer agents they could make have an action set that they optimize over on which um, optimizers they want to stake on so i mean it's pretty neat in fact every agent in this system could could be modeled with reinforcement learning um the beautiful thing about reinforcement learning it, it's a nice generalization trick where all you need is an environment and an action set so you it, it's gives you all these intelligence algorithms for agents that are going to observe something and then have some set of actions that they're going to choose to, to do so really for for any and that's why it pairs so nicely with agent based modeling is because you can see any agent as being in in that you can model any agent as just simply having an environment and having an, an action set yeah right uh, great uh, Sean yeah exactly uh, you're right uh, everybody can be a reinforcement learning agent uh, of course um, 
maybe um, you can uh, give me give us some sort of demo because I I don't think this repo will work as I can see it right now. Um, but I I, I do uh, I sent you an, uh, a movie uh, of a real simulation. Uh, Perfect. Then I can explain. Maybe you can show that up on the screen right now. So we have 14 minutes, Mark. Did you want to talk about yeah. the go into the optimizer agent or maybe come back to it? Or... No, 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 not yet. Not okay. yet. You explained it uh, quite well. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so you just sent me a link, I guess. Um, where was that? In your uh, private, uh, in my, in our private uh, DMs. Uh, I don't in uh, Discord. No, above, above. Go, go, scroll, oh. scroll up. There, there it is. Yeah, this one. Awesome. Yeah. I think you need to download it first, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically what I'm, I'm doing right now is I'm... Um, okay, can you stop it right there? From, yeah. For a moment. I also want to try Scroll this. I, I want to try this really quick. See if. Yeah. It'll... Well, I now, as I, as I can see of your agents, they're not not. Correct, oh. Okay. So okay. I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm sure it's 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 going to fill. But um, let's let's yeah let's go from uh, from there stop. So this is basically the command which is has been put into the readme file. So you can try that yourself. Once you have uh, um, set up the environment correctly, so uh, in in the token spice it's run underscore one, and this this one is just you know a, a, a fork of that. Um, but then it's it's starting up the cat cat simulation, and don't mind the arguments; they're just writing stuff to a um, output test directory, I guess, in the in the repo. So if you can start it, and it starts the cat cat stop stop there. It starts the cat cat simulation as you can see but before i do that i just did a, some sort of debug uh, logging statement that is showing what kind of agents are active in the first place that's about, about that uh, yeah about there now okay let it run mark are these agents yeah. uh these are the agents that you you've taken these from the token spice engine is that right so that these agents are actually have the capacity to interact with the EVM, a uh, ganache. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So you've you've you're yeah. running a uh, analog uh, mixed signal simulator is what Trent would call it. We're using CAD CAD, uh, so it's EVM in the loop yeah. is the idea. Exactly, it's really amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, what you see is here, if you build the token spice uh, environment, you can only see info ticks. But now you can see that our pools are being published now. That's, that's the B pool statement. And they are really interacting with Ganache now. So they are uh, going to do that. And what I did is I uh, put some energy web publisher, they're unstake and they stake randomly on these pools. So basically what I'm trying to accomplish here is to have um, a, a log of uh, pools which are being staked upon which are basically input or for the observation space for the reinforcement learning agents. But I'm not sure, Sean, you have to help me out on this here, mm -hmm. if I'm doing that correctly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of is, is it really the actions, uh, the observation space we need? Mm -hmm. I, th I think I had pushed a simple example uh, when we were doing the hackathon that was sort of observing maybe a random We'll have to maybe we if we have time we can dig around in that or maybe next week. But let's yeah continue. next week I think yeah. But I would like to have some sort of uh, pointers to how how to put up the observation space for these kinds of agents. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, there are uh, randomly uh, staked upon, but uh, once in a while I think every three every eight hours uh, new pools are being uh, published. And these are data token pools you can stake on, of course. And basically what I put out there on the screen is how much ocean has been staked on which pool. Mm, so this is the curation process happening. Exactly. 
But basically, it's, there's not so, it's not so much of a curation actually happening because there are random, <laughs> random, randomly staking. Random there. curation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so basically, this is uh, this was uh, um, uh, how far I got until now. Um, a few words again on uh, on uh, the uh, um, the migration of token spice to CapCat. Um, I really need to flesh out a lot of a lot of more stuff because uh, as I uh, as I uh, experienced, CatCat is not really a fond of uh, object oriented uh, big objects uh, floating around. So I needed to flesh out some sort of object oriented code into functional code. And then later on, I, I made it uh, objects again. Um, but uh, bear with me because I'm not a Pythonista uh, in this matter. So I just, you know, fooled around a bit. Uh, I'm not just sure a, if I... Just a, a quick aside, if you want to see uh, some object-oriented CAD-CAD code, Vitor and Santiago, who are both in this call, uh, along with Random Shinichi, actually uh, yeah. have a nice ah, model. Andrew is here as well. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I don't see Andrew Sh Random Shinichi in this call, but they worked on this uh, object-oriented model. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I noticed that. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as I say, I'm not a Pythonista, so I hacked around a bit uh, in order to get it running and uh, focus on the, actually, on the CatCat simulation, uh, getting it to run uh, according to my wishes. So, as you as you can imagine... Oh, maybe, Sean, it's it's a good idea to go into the Polymax directory of the uh, uh, CatCat model parts. Uh, let's see, okay. where am I here? Um... Yeah, yeah, over here. Parts, model, parts, polymax. Yep. Basically, yep. these are the, 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 the policies and the mechanisms of the CatCat structure. So if you go into accounting, for instance, mm -hmm. this is where I, uh, I account for all the, all the, uh, the things happening on the, on the side of the staking. Uh, uh, so the amounts of stake, staking and all that. So, so basically, I'm... And policy, this is a policy to update the state. And uh, consumption.py, logistics.py, these are all kinds of stuff that this is really neat about CatCat. You can really uh, have a fine-grained uh, idea of how you structure your policies. So basically, each agent could have a policy for themselves and then um, structure it uh, in, this, in this way. So this is all wired up in the, of course, in the partial state update block. And that's something left and then scroll down a bit. In the other, uh, no, it's over in the directory structure. Yeah, bit, bit more underneath partial state update block. There, yeah. So here you can see that you can really neatly wire this up according to your needs. This is the nice thing about CatCat uh, with respect to uh, to uh, the token spice model, uh, because the token spice model basically has all all kinds of you know just a huge blob of a state, and here you can easily more or more finely grain uh, your your staking your your state update uh, functions uh, in this manner. I think that that's it for now, uh, Sean. Uh, uh, as for me, is concerned. This is incredible, Mark. Uh, you've really you've taken the whole token spice engine <laughs> and and sh and put it into uh, CadCAD Simulator, which is just a, I think that's an amazing feat. Um, one thing that I d I, I want to highlight. So I, I think Mark has highlighted a lot of the advantages of. I don't know if I should be so opinionated, but you might say advantages of CadCAD over Token Spice having this very clean uh, interface, the partial state update blocks where we get to wire up exactly what we want to change over time. Uh, what is the state? Uh, you know, it's contained in a very clean standard way. What are the policy functions? What are the state update functions? So I want to highlight one other sort of on the other side of that Token Spice. What uh, something that Token Spice is really Mm, focused on is this idea of hierarchical verification and essentially what that means is it has a very comprehensive test suite um, so once you run uh, it, when you're looking at token spice and you open up the repository um, you're gonna you want to go through the instructions it's gonna have you run 
uh, the Ganache blockchain and um, compile the contracts. And then the main, the sort of highlight of the repository is to run these tests. And I think I can do that in a few minutes. I know that I had just, um, let's, let's see, I, I'll, I'll see if in, in four minutes I can give everyone um, a full demo of sort of just running Token Spice from scratch and getting to the point where you're uh, running the tests. So I'm just going to make a uh, temporary directory and go in there. And I'm just going to jump to this LTF uh, branch. So first you got to grab token spice. And then you also got to grab uh, contracts, ocean protocol contracts. So these are the actual solidity contracts. And then we're going to go into Token Spice and uh, activate our virtual environment. So, virtual fish, activate Token Spice, pip install, dash r, requirements. Um, we need to launch Ganache. So, this is all uh, built in. So, we're going to go. Now that we have our environment activated, we're going to launch ganache.py. So this is going to run a local Ethereum blockchain, and it's just complaining because it's actually already running. So let me do that again. So now that we have our local EVM running, we're going to compile the contracts. So let me go in there and follow these instructions. Uh, it's npm install. So this installs uh, Ocean Protocol on our system and gets all the dependencies that are necessary. And you'll notice a lot of warnings and errors. This might eat up the time, but let's see what we can get to. And kind of what I'm trying to showcase here is this looks like a lot, but it ends up being pretty smooth and simple. And it's nice to be comfortable running a local EVM, because uh, even with Mark's adaptation of the CAD-CAD modeling, um, because he's borrowing those agent implementations from Ocean Protocol, they have this uh, Web3 interaction capacity built in so we can run real simulations on the EVM. What that means is, we don't. It's not just for simulations. You can run all these simulations on your local Ganache test chain, and then you can actually deploy. You could run these agents, so we could have these balancer pool optimization uh, energy web agents actually running on main the main net. So let's um, deploy our contracts. So we're going to see a bunch of uh, transactions going through on our local EVM as these contracts get compiled and deployed. using 0.2 ETH in gas. And then finally, now that we have our EVM, and again, I'll activate my virtual environment, and we should be able to run all the tests, PyTest. And then this is, I love this part, when you see all green. <laughs> So this is this is running all the uh, test simulations that are built into Token Spice for all the different agents, and uh, yeah, essentially all the agents so far. And we see all these transactions going through on the EVM. So now it's running the so it tested all the agents, and now it's running the simulator, or testing the simulator components. testing the balancer pools. And I'm a little bit over time, so it, it, I'll let this keep running. But uh, I want to really thank Mark for being the first guest host on 
on the lab here. I think this was amazing, and Mark, it's really incredible work uh, that you've adapted Token Spice into CAD CAD. I think that's really cool, and there's so much uh, value here to be explored. So I'm really looking forward uh, to the next session. Mark's doing a, two, a series of two sessions, so he'll be back next week. I hope that everyone uh, tunes in, and I hope everyone found this as fascinating as and exciting as I did. And uh, It was incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. That was amazing. Thanks, guys. Um, and see you next week, hopefully. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yo, that was sick, dude. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah yeah so, Mark. Uh, sean has to go as well okay. uh, maybe we can uh, grab some time uh, next week for a quick call about reinforcement uh, observation uh, space happy to all right thank you Mark. thanks have a nice weekend you bye -bye. too take care bye bye <laughs>